Hello, and welcome back to Pod Popper's Place. I wanted to share with you some more of Kendra's card challenge number nine while there's still time to get your cards in. The contest ends at the end of March, so I have given you some ideas of how you can get two sets completed, and I'm going to show you how I put mine together. I decided to use some um, paper from Michaels that I got on clearance and they are 12 by 12 sheets so I'm going to cut those down to 6 by 6. The arrows I'm circling right there are showing you which papers you need to use if you have directional paper. So I d end up using um, some different sheets from here. There's quite a few to choose from but two of them are going to be directional. This first one with the yay on it and another one with rainbows on it. With this current challenge, you could actually have up to four sheets with, that are directional. It's really handy to have lots of birthday cards on hand. And so this is a great opportunity to, for me to use this pack to make a whole bunch. Once I've chosen all six of my sheets, I cut them down into six by six squares. I also separate my directional paper so that I can go through and match those up with the sketches from Kendra's card challenge that work well with papers that are directional. Once I've matched up my directional paper with the correct cutting templates and making sure that I only have one directional paper per template, I then sort my other sheets of paper so that every template has two different sheets and that I won't have any that are repeated. Now that I am ready to cut, I go ahead and start with template A and I make sure that I am laying out my directional paper in the correct way that the arrows are labeled so that when I go to put my cards together that they will lay the correct way and I won't have a yay facing sideways. For me, the way that I keep track of which paper goes with which card, I just flip it over and write the number of the card on the back and then stack them in the correct order. Because I'm trying to make two sets of cards, I have two separate stacks and as I go through each uh, template, I separate the stacks according to the pattern paper so that I make sure and have one set on one side that has all the different papers and one set on the other side that has the others. Somewhere along the line, I did mess this up and found that, oh, no, I have two yays um, with the same paper or two stripes with the same paper. So I knew somewhere I had messed up. So I just went through and switched everything around to make sure that each set had only one type of paper. When you prepare for Kendra's card challenge, not only is it important to pay attention to directional paper, but it's also important to watch which cut that you should make first, first on each template. Kendra is really wonderful and she puts some little scissors on her templates so that you know that that's the first cut you need to make in order for everything to be um, done properly. One especially challenging cut is this diagonal and I did leave this in here for you to see that it's very common for this diagonal cut to be done improperly. So I flipped the paper over and I measured so that it was one and a quarter inches as shown on the template and I did a diagonal line with a ruler and this would have been great except for that it should have been done backwards on the back side because when I turn it over it does not match the correct diagonal way and um, so I I do end up using those and so when I make those cards they will be flipped the wrong direction according to the sketch but you will see on the second try I made sure to um, do it from the other side. So when you flip over the paper, then you just make the diagonal line starting at the, the top going down rather than on the right, rather than the left top going down to the right bottom. Once I have my cuts all made, I sort through my piles and stack the card sketches in order from 1 through 15 and then they are ready to go and I just have to start creating. I know Kendra uses um, baggies that are numbered and that's a great way to keep everything organized, especially if you don't have room to just leave these out on your desk and as you work. 
I've pulled out some uh, coordinating papers that are from Stampin' Up! and I've also pulled out a bunch of embossing folders. I have quite a few that would work for birthday themes and so I pull all of those out. I cut, take the papers and I cut them down to four and a quarter by five and a half size and then I'm going to just have a full embossing party. Once I have all these colors cut out, I have 30 sheets, enough for every card to have a background and then I have them all embossed and they're ready to go and this helps me in the process so that I just have to grab one and um, begin the next card sketch. Obviously, for the purpose of time, I'm only going to show you the process of creating my first two cards, which are both sketch number one. I love the gold metallics that are already in this paper, so I decided to play that up a bit and use gold metallic as my layering pieces and also as the cross pieces on the front. Because there are no measurements on the rectangular white piece of paper on the front of card sketch one, I didn't know what size exactly to use, so I've got out a few different dies to see which size would be the best. I decided to use um, one of the banner and then one of the rectangular ones for each card to make it a little bit different. And then I'm also going to create one as a side view rather than a, a vertical view. I often cut out the center of paper so that it, the, it's not as much weight and it doesn't get as thick. And I found this also helps sometimes with warping. When we have so many different layers of paper and then glue on top of that, I do find that sometimes my cards get warped and then they don't look as nice. This also gives you the option of having smaller rectangles already cut for different frames. And then also if you need just a little bit of a color to punch out a shape or die then you don't need to cut into a brand new sheet of paper. I tend to use liquid glue as it goes a little bit faster than tearing tape and then it also gives you that little bit of wiggle room so that you can line up the frame as best as possible. I keep my card sketches handy and right nearby where I'm creating so that I can look at them as I'm putting this together and making sure that the placement is where it's supposed to be. You could easily just glue all your pieces together and then have cards ready to go for stamping on or adding sentiments to later. However, I like to get mine pretty much completely done and ready to go. And I like to create ones that are all unique. So that is what takes me a very long time sometimes to do my cards because I will make both of these um, quite different and quite unique and not use any of the same stamps. I pulled out an old Stampin' Up! set that has to do with birthdays and found this little cupcake. I then masked one off in the center so that I could stamp another one on each additional side um, without going over it and this was super easy just to trim a tiny little mask and cover that up and I didn't layer them much but just enough so that they're not um, just next to each other and then I used my uh, Spectrum Noir in different shades of greenish blue to color the papers and added some Jelly Roll um, sparkle pen to the heart just to give it a little extra um, interest and then added some details to the cupcake liners as well. I then cut out the sentiment, hey there, with a little comma, because this is actually part of a different set that's hey there cupcake. And so I'm kind of insinuating the cupcake with the picture of the cupcake rather than actually using the word cupcake. Um, and my, for some reason, my little H there got off when I um, took it out and I tried to fix it and ended up kind of messing it up a little bit. But, um, you know, it's one of those things. It just bugged me that it wasn't lining up properly. So then there was another piece to the um, same Stampin' Up! set that had these candles that said wish big. And so I kind of did something similar. I cut up a little tiny mask just to cover up the wish big part um, because I wanted to stamp this basic circle behind it. So that kind of looked like the you know candles being lit up were kind of shining this nice little halo around it. I also used markers to color in the candles and the wish big area. And then I put this on the banner rather than the um, rectangular square on, like I did on the other one. And I also layered this one where I didn't layer the rectangular square. 
thank you so much for being here and watching. Please let me know which card do you prefer. Please join us for Kendra's card challenge number nine. The link to the Facebook group will be in the description box below. I have included photos of card sketch number two that I completed as well. And you can find all of the cards that I created for Kendra's card challenge at my Instagram page. And the link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated.